Predominator is frozen all on zero. The alarm set, I'm gonna have to pull off. This is wild. So, okay, what we all have to understand here is Dean is driving this old vehicle. He's driving at night. Hmm, not something I would do in an older vehicle, but no charge on his phone. So thankfully, he had texted Angie, and Angie started texting me, oh my God, he's, he's stranded, his car has just died, and he's got like seven or 8% left on his phone. So she gives me the, the location, she's able to show me on, on the map where it is, and, and she says that he has roadside assistance. And I look and I go, oh shit, it's not AAA, it's some offshoot brand, okay, well this will be interesting. So I tried calling them, and after trying, it, it had to be 8, 10, 12 times that I kept dialing the number. I finally got through. And it's the old, you know, if you want English, press 1. If you want Spanish, press 2. And it goes through the whole thing, and you can't press a, a number until all of the other options have been stated. Okay, finally, I get a guy. And I say, look, I've got a problem here. i got a friend of mine who's sitting in the desert. He has zero power. And... The sun is coming up. It's going to be hot as hell there very, very shortly. We need to get him a tow truck. So the guy says to me, okay, well, I'll just call him. I go, well, no, you can't because his, his phone is dead. And he says, oh, well, where is he? Well, from Google Maps, I was able to give the coordinates. He goes, okay. And he says, so what's wrong with the car? I don't know. I'm not there. I said, look, dude, I'm calling you from the middle of Europe. And we, we just got to get this guy picked up. He goes, well, where should I take him? I said, I, I don't know. To a gas station. He goes, no, no, can't take him to a gas station because I'll boot him out. I go, okay, at McDonald's. No, he won't be able to stay there either. I go, well, then what exactly do you suggest? He goes, well, let me find a mechanic. He goes, okay, well, here's one. It's about 10 miles away. We could tow him there. I go, okay, are you going to put him in the tow truck also besides his vehicle? And the guy tells me, yes, no problem. And it's going to be somewhere between 45 minutes to 90 minutes. I said, okay, now you're sure? And he says, yes. So I give him all of the information, Dean's plates, et cetera, et cetera. All right, good. Now I tell Angie, all right, get a hold of Dean, tell him that, you know, in approximately, you know, hour, <clears throat> there's going to be a tow truck that's coming and you're going to get towed to a place where they're going to be able to fix your vehicle. A couple hours go by and I get a message from Angie, Dean's still on the side of the road. I said, what are you talking about? Now, this is like three hours later. And he's on, he's, he's on the side of the road there and it, it's starting to get hot as hell. And again, he has no, no power and his phone. So, he, and there's no way he could charge it up from the car because the car is dead. So once again, I go back to dialing the wonderful roadside assistance. 
This time it took me probably 15 to 18 times of calling. I finally get a girl. I explain the situation to her. And she says, oh, yeah, I, I see it in the system here. Uh, it was canceled. I go, what do you mean it was canceled? She goes, yeah, they couldn't, they couldn't reach Mr. Ryan. I said, well, of course they can't reach Mr. Ryan. I made it clear the first time around that his phone is dead. He cannot be contacted. Just go and pick him up. Yes, well, the location where you wanted him to be towed to um, is, is a thousand miles away. I said, what are you talking about? Your guy at your company is the one who chose this location. I didn't choose it. I don't even know where the hell he is. She says, yeah, well, it got canceled. So Mr. Ryan's going to have to call back. No, Mr. Ryan can't call back. So, ma'am, we, we have to talk to Mr. Ryan. I go, well, you can't. The guy is frying in the desert, and somebody has to get out there to pick him up. Finally, you know, 10 minutes later, I, I, I get another person. I have to tell the story all over again. This person again tells me, well, we have to be able to reach Mr. Ryan. I don't know how many times I have to tell you people you cannot reach Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan's phone is dead. I am speaking on behalf of Mr. Ryan. It, it was not pretty. I was very, very angry. And I basically said, I don't care what you do. I don't care where you take him, but you have to get there and you have to go there now. The man is frying in the desert. Frying in the desert. But you have to get there and you have to go there now. Now. The man is frying in the desert. Well, I have managed to find myself in another unforeseen, unbelievable rut. Um, been stuck here in God knows where, is where New Mexico, as you can see how destitute it is here. A uh, very cattle ranch country. Uh, was, uh, I've been, I was driving while it was dark, really, and the lights have dimmed, the battery died. Uh, never had a battery die while I was driving and start shifting automatically to a variety of different gears adding to a very difficult drive more of a challenge i mean you, you got to be almost a stunt driver to <laughs> pull off what, what i managed to uh, at least survive in for now i've been here for uh roughly I'm not sure at least i can see now uh look how close i am to the road yes i've had the fleet of convoys pass me i've had all kinds of just unbelievable, uh, all kinds of unbelievable issues and situations here. Uh, really stressful situation, but uh, this is on the road, you know, with Dean Ryan, so uh, I guess uh, it's bound to happen no matter what. In fact, when they get here, I think I'll jump out of the little bushels here with my little uh, New Mexico dagger from all the skinwalkers around me. I'm going crazy or I'm just getting in tune with the land here. Uh, the nearest location is about a 14 mile walk, which according to my calculations, it's, a, it's roughly eight hours. So I'd have to leave all my entire gear here in this van that was literally just tuned up, uh, not so much anymore. Very dangerous room. This is a flustered Dean Ryan from the road here in Nowheresville, New Mexico, standing out uh, for now.
Flagging people down to no avail. So many got my attention, and I caught theirs. They started honking from far. Didn't look like a tow truck. It didn't seem like a tow truck, but it certainly had all the hallmarks of a local desert person. Closer he got, he said, "Hey, hey, we need some help, don't you, huh?" I tried to jump and start my car. Told me it was the alternator when I quickly said, "Well, wait a minute. Can I at least charge my phone for a little bit here? It's completely dead." So hurry! I came here to help another stranded person. If you want, you can ride with me. Well, foolishly, I got in the truck and started charging my phone. To which, we went about a mile down the road where he helped a unfortunate stranded civilian. By the way, my name is Jesus. You can call me Jesus. Only to drop me off after, because he had to go. For all the help he gave me, which was a whopping seven percent of a phone charge. Not soon enough, he said. Feel free to cash up. As soon as I did, in hopes that he would stay, the Jesus was gone. His minutes are turning into hours, days into weeks. The delirium sets in. The delirium sets in as the heat begins to strangle. As the heat every ounce of his life in its path. Every on ounce. these lost highways, many have perished in Mexico's deadly heat. Only few survive. Diablo of the desert. On these lost highways, lonely souls soon become dust. Just when you think you're ahead of the game. Ah, escape death one more time. So, it is day three, and I'm currently still in New Mexico. 
I'm still in New Mexico. On the road has its moments of sincerity, unusual road fellows, and times of cleanliness. On this road trip from hell, the guy can't afford to miss the chance of washing away his bad luck. Well, when you spend endless amounts of time in the desert, in a destitute one at that, with no sign of hope, no sign of life, possibilities, potential, anywhere to be seen, in every new hurdle, any crises, from a small to large, surrounding every option, you forget the essentials in that showering. So, if you're on the road, you gotta be fresh, you gotta be clean, and I mean, this is a godsend. I mean, break away from the darkness of the desert. I can't take any more. Well, here goes the shower, and it needs to be done. Don't shame, darling, don't shame. What a mess, I don't mess. I would call it it's so refreshing to finally shower in this wild, wacky desert of New Mexico. But I feel so exquisite, I do. Yet I'm very fresh in the utmost pain. Allow me to continue our expedition into the pits of hell. Until next time, I'm Dean Ryan. Setting up. Hello. Hello, everybody. This is Dean Ryan. I'm alive. And I want to show you in New Mexico. There's a long story about what's going on with me. Look at this skyline right here. I'm on a mountain in New Mexico. Joining me for this excursion for the 4th of July. Uh, all my devices are uh, on fire. I've got to go back here. But can you see that? While, while, while I'm teasing Jim's uh, presence, let's see. Uh, Jim, are you with us right now? Right now. Okay, here we are. Okay. There we are. Jim, Professor, um, welcome to the show. Happy July 4th, Jim. Happy July 4th, Dean. You look great. Actually, you look rested, you look healthy, you look good. So, Jim, this is just incredible. This is our uh, first holidays. We have uh, been color commentating uh, for quite some time. Okay, let's get a little closer, shall we? Okay, so look at this. I'm going to do a panoramic view. Watch this. Yeah, uh, don't worry. I, I've done film before, uh, although it doesn't look like it. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to do a panoramic view, everybody. There's Albuquerque right there. I'm in New Mexico currently. This is sensational. And then watch this. Here we go. Just unbelievable, Jim. There's one behind me, too. They could be real guns, too. People could be trying to shoot me. I'm open to that idea as well. <laughs> no. I'm a wanted man, Jim. You, you know. But look at that, look, look at that um, sunset. That's something I have to tell you, Jim. I don't know if you've been to this state. But I have to say, as much as I have some issues here, uh, they have one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen in my life. New Mexico now, is a beautiful state, Dean. It's a beautiful state. Okay, Jim, I'm going to bring you back. Um, and while I have you here, Jim, I, I know you have um, 
you have some things to uh, attest to. Okay, let me let me get rid of this here. Live from New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico, with Dean Ryan and Jim Fetzer for July 4th, 2024. Next year, we'll be in person watching this. I'm going to be dressed as Uncle Sam, and Jim will be dressed as Yankee Doodle Dandy because that's what it's all about. Okay, so I want to thank everybody for joining us. Jim, thanks for the last-minute call. You can, and by the way, we didn't coordinate. Jim's wearing blue. I'm wearing blue. <laughs> it's just it's, it's strange. So it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So for uh, Jim Petzer and for the rest of us here at Real Deal Media, I'm Dean Ryan. Saying God bless America and God bless the night elves. That's how we are. Good night, everybody. Every fourth of July. as a quick drive from New Mexico to El Paso quickly took a dark turn. The alluring mist of purple rain turned into another Arizona monsoon. Driving a van who's taken a beating like no other. The trials and tribulations this guy has endured has only just begun. is or whatever to what's going on here let us investigate and it can go on your way if you have a political or a or or an emotional situation here i don't want to hear about it i want to see your id now step out of the vehicle the court has said the checkpoints are only permissible insofar as they involve a brief and limited inquiry into resident status so if border patrol is detaining people to ask about more things uh, than just to verify the resident status if they don't have any suspicion of criminal wrongdoing um, that would violate the fourth amendment Interesting. Thank you. This episode, this series, this story is still being written to this very minute. Yes, I can uh, honestly say that because I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I'll show you some of the uh, scenery. I'm at a McDonald's now.
and it's getting a little hot in here, isn't it? Um, and right here, right now, it is. Okay, is my computer burning up? I'm usually a bit more professional than this, but you can see the, uh, just the, that's Mexico right there. El Paso, right here. There's Mexico. Uh, as you go into Texas from the west, if you don't know, and you go on the border where I am, southwest, you see a lot of Mexico. It's very mountain oriented, very desert oriented, and then there are brief moments of uh, kind of forestry trees, and it's it, it's a much slightly cooler climate than New Mexico and Arizona was. So just wanted to share that with you, and not sure what day it is. Okay, so here's what's been going on here. Uh, which uh, what started off as a just a three hour tour has turned into one of the most difficult, challenging psychological warfares I've trips, journey, travels, expeditions I've ever been on. We now want to switch gears to the other story we're following closely, the path of that deadly hurricane barrel now projected to hit South Texas as more than 140 million Americans are sweltering through a dangerous heat wave. Barrel ripping through the Gulf of Mexico tonight after slamming into the Yucatan Peninsula as a category two storm with 100 mile per hour winds. The massive summer hurricane now taking aim at South Texas. We're preparing for the worst, praying and hoping for the least amount of rain. The storm already blamed for at least nine deaths after tearing through parts of the Caribbean this week, carving a path of destruction. In South Padre Island, Texas, the storm sending some vacationers in town for the holiday weekend packing. We're getting out before the hurricane. This as 140 million people face heat alerts nationwide. More than 50 cities from the Pacific Northwest to Arizona expected to break record highs as residents collect sandbags and prepare to hunker down. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, you're not taking any chances. Uh, just being prepared. Getting past the Border Patrol and their checkpoints around El Paso. Just when I felt free, I soon realized I was driving right into Hurricane Burl that was growing rapidly by the hour. Although my destination was on the east side of Texas, I was given strong advice and fair warning not to further my travel due to vehicle disruptions, but also a tremendous amount of flooding. The hurricane was shifting well beyond the equator and the nearby regions like Houston was making its way east. I would have definitely been trapped. Every friend I thought I remotely had in the state of Texas no longer exist. I was stranded in sweltering heat with no signs of hope once again. This time not in a ghostly desert, but the ghostly parking lots of Walmart. Well, here comes the storm. They calm before the storm. It's my current scene. Man, talk about sweating to the uh, to the deep state, no way. All the manufactured weather. And now, having to uh, somewhat camp it out here in a very, very, very sweltering parking lot. This is the face of survival. It's even hot when it rains, and there's no, I, I can't leave my AC on, or you lose everything. So I, there's a reason, because it's uh, humid, and I'm not sure that's a thing where you are, but uh, there's no shelter to be had here. So without going outside, if, if you were to put, it's a very drastic um, plaza this is, probably the size of three, maybe two, but possibly four huge uh, soccer stadiums. I would say two just to be conservative, but uh, probably more. And uh, anyone who knows anything about uh, winds and gust, the more windy a, a, a place is, um, the more gusting of wind uh, gathers and uh, just starts their gang banging on humanity. That, that's where I'm getting at. The fear and anguish all wrapped in one can mess with you, your state of mind. You start to wonder who you really are and why am I here? 
What's my next step? I had no choice, other option, but to flee the very place that was supposed to have brought me safe harbor, Texas. Taking all the measurements and precautions and necessary steps to use the battery at its fullest to get the hell back to Texas. here and the hurricane hurricane burl and his siblings are now returning hurricane burl and his siblings are now returning just in time for the gop convention that's just days and days away well what's not days away is me getting stuck in another very unproductive moment i've barely slept and I have been stranded in a very in interesting part of Texas. And so any kind of civility, normalcy is way out the window. I'm going north and I'm avoiding, I'm avoiding the, the US border patrol sea suckers at the bottom uh, near El Paso and everything Interstate 10 at this point. I will not endure this. I, I know they're coming after me. They came after another colleague of Real Real Media, James Martinez, going into California. So, off to Roswell we go. Well, the truth is shame. The first hurricane that comes, shame on them who are doing it to us. The second hurricane that comes, shame on me for not being prepared for it in a proper vehicle with proper tools, weapons in all kinds of different kind of prepping military needs for the military battalion that is now us. Uh, yes, I have now escaped by her. Texas is now I'm on my way to Roswell. Let's go. Well, well, it looks like I um, managed to get out of Texas now and now into a whole different new area. A very mysterious, very controversial one, Roswell. Let's see what this is all about. It's historical. It's monumental. It is, it's an American legendary folklore to some, but a very realistic truth about our history and nature, not just as Americans, but as humans. Let's go to Roswell and see what this mystery is all about.
now in the mountains, as you can probably hear or see, certainly feel. Uh, I've been in the desert, been in the desert really, and now I'm in a different climate. But you can tell here is uh, we're now in Arizona, the just incredible forestry of the United States goes well beyond Yellowstone, well beyond Yosemite, and right here in the heart on the top of it, of Arizona. Have a look at this. Now, I've never been a fan of deep forestry wilderness at this point, what else could go wrong? But I'm, I'm feeling positive of what can go right as we, myself, as I'm nearly reaching the conclusion, the finish line of this dastardly journey, this dastardly trip was supposed to be a life-changing ordeal, and it certainly was, but not in the way we had all thought, or, nor have I ever anticipated. Uh, it was quite deadly, uh, not once, twice, but just multiple times I stopped counting. Anyway, back to the road, as I can taste the finish line from here. Okay, this um, this last road here on this devilish mountain is picking up some wind gust, and I really, really, really could have sworn that the, the just mention of any storm and just the thought of it was going to be left behind in New Mexico. I'm starting to feel I was a little misguided by the stupid AccuWeather that can shove it up their Accu sphincter. That's right. Yeah. So we're going to have to follow these roads here. Uh, we're trying to beat the storm. I mean, look how, just look how gloomy, look how foggy, and no visibility, uh, really, the light this road is. And it shouldn't be that way. But it's a very slippery, slimy, windy, long road here. And this is supposed to get me into and through Phoenix, uh, according to the uh, label. But the cars are passing me, uh, having trouble with the incline, per usual, per usual, having trouble with the incline. Okay. And let's hope this beast can make it from to get to the beach area immediately we just escaped the hurricanes of Texas now we're met by the devilish gusty winds of Tonto and his luciferian howling winds oh wind will the pain and all right I made it down the mountain Made it down the mountain now and in Phoenix. Watching Dean go on this. From my perspective, it, it was like watching my little brother go on a, on a journey and run into problem after problem after a problem. To me, it was it, very early on in his journey, it was an omen that that's not where he was supposed to be. Everything that could possibly go wrong, catastrophic wrong. thing. And sitting in the background, waiting, biting nails, waiting to hear from him to find out where did he make it to and what. We're in daily contact trying to keep tabs on exactly where he was and I always had the maps up to know where was he, approximately how much longer was he going to be on the road. And the monsoon, that was bad, but it wasn't as bad as when the alternator went and he was stranded. The desperation that I felt trying to resolve getting someone there to assist him on roadside assistance, um, it was sheer desperation. And it was heartbreaking and it was scary. The amount of time that it took and him sitting in the, in the heat of the desert was a very, very scary thing really for all of us. I am grateful for everyone's support. Uh, I'm grateful that he is safe. And I am really grateful for the RDM family for standing behind him and helping him through 
this journey. It was dangerous and it was impactful for all of us. so much in such a little time that life is precious but so are the people around you no matter how lonely the roads are how shanty the towns are or how ghostly the deserts may appear what you're searching for on the road is right here at home too young to die too rare to live Thank you. 